Hi everyone. <coughs> hey, um, NTCUA here. Um, name's Randy. Working on some <coughs> arc attenuators, kind of a project of mine lately. And um, I've got some here. The problem with this camera is it won't autofocus once I start the video, so I have to kind of show them from a distance. I apologize for that ahead of time. But here's one I've worked on. These are all printed circuit board ones. This one is a, um, of course, with BNCs. A little bit of <laughs> rework on the bottom with the braid there. <clears throat> but that's one. This is another similar one. This one I did with a shield on this side, and that worked out a little differently. Trying to get one that has a really good frequency response. I'm really only concerned about about 440 megahertz, but um, if I can go higher, it'd be great. But it's just kind of fun. Another one. Now this one, the difference here, the, the reason I'm showing you this side, I don't know if you can see them in the video, you probably can. There's some surface mount devices on the board, and there's extra room there actually for more. If I wanted to make it so it was like a high power. And these has SMA connectors on it. And this is the one I'm going to work with, I think, to show you. Um, same thing, SMA components, <coughs> or I'm sorry, um, SMD components and SMA connectors. <laughs> and I've got a connector on this one here. The problem is, I think partly is to actually be able to accurately measure this with the analyzer because when you start getting up into the 400s or so megahertz, every little thing matters. I mean, you can you can put a, a connector arrangement like this on there, and that's got a quarter wavelength, you know, frequency to it, and it just it starts confusing things, <coughs> making it difficult. So the best I could do, I'm not sure it's going to turn out. I've done this in a while, but. Um, it's quite a, an arrangement here, but as far as zeroing the tracking generator goes, this is about all I've got, and it's about as close as I can get to the arrangement on the attenuator itself afterwards for testing, so it's still going to be a little off, but <coughs> hopefully it'll be fairly close. So, let's change the frequency, start can still be zero, I don't care, stop, let me stop 500, megahertz and, and by the way if you can't read it I'm using a, a Rigel a Regal I don't know how which way they say it I think it's Regal actually um, DSA 815 uh, spectrum analyzer with the tracking generator option um, so what I'm doing now is turning on the tracking generator <coughs> um, center frequency and then normalizing it for that setup again it's not going to be exactly the same as um, it's going to be hooked to the attenuator, but it's as close as I can get it at this point until I order some more connectors and things. And let's change this down to 80%, so or even 16. Give me a little room to, little wiggle room there. <laughs> All right, so I got that. <coughs> let's go ahead and take this off. Let's see what I want to take off. Um, I think what I'm going to do is change the direction that these are on here. I'm going to put the attenuator on. I think it might work better that way. I'm not totally positive about that. But we will find out soon enough. <coughs> so, I'm going to hook the cable onto this one, like this, and then attach this one to the input. I'm not sure if there's enough cable in here to Poop that underneath the analyzer. Yeah, that looks like that'll work. Now you can't see that very well. I apologize for that, but it's kind of the way it is. Okay. And then we'll attach this on here. See what we got. I might do a normalized suit. By the way, um, this is supposed to be a. Um, <coughs> see if I can adjust this down. Actually, I can't. I'm not sure. I can bring it down. I don't want to go too crazy here. There we go. Kind of see the attenuator hanging off there a little bit. <laughs> um, <coughs> all right, so um, just looking at it like this, kind of raw data. It's supposed to be minus 20. There's going to be some noise in there because I don't believe um, that the input attenuator is set low enough that it's going to not give me a little bit of a uh, bit of noise on that, so it's going to skew it a little bit. But it's supposed to be a minus 20. Oh, that's an evil frequency. 666. Oh my gosh. Um, I was reading minus 14.5 ish. Uh, excuse me, 19.5 ish. 
and <clears throat> that's fairly flat all the way out to about here this is uh, 420 meg which is not too bad and then it kind of jumps up see now and the thing is I see about the cabling and stuff I mean you can no, no, let me try it no it actually seems pretty stable before I was able to just touch cables and things and it would move and I was like oh come on really um, let me try trace trace type video average I'm just going to average that out a little bit get some of that noise out of there so now it's uh, minus 18 dB up there at 480 megahertz, so it's 2 dB. And if you, I don't know if with RF attenuators, if anyone knows out there, let me know as far as stucking them goes and and uh, that um, do you do minus 3 dB points? Do you want one that's flat within 1 dB? What I'm not really sure. I have one online to check and see how they're specced. So if you know, hey, throw me a comment. Let me know, would you? Anyway, <clears throat> right about there, that's 19 and a half, that's at 430, so that's pretty close to what I was wanting anyway. And then uh, all the way down, it's like, you know, minus, uh, I'm just kind of looking here. It's a plus or minus no more than a half a dB, I'd say. I mean, that's really pretty good, <laughs> I mean, all things considered. That was pretty hard to do, and that took me a lot of different designs. I did designs where the the opposite side of the SMD components was completely copper not a good idea but then if I did it so that it was not any copper then that was a problem because of grounding so I ended up actually <coughs> see like this I did this is hard with the etching there um, alignments are kind of an issue with double sided sometimes when you're doing it by hand um, anyway um, I did so there's a copper ground plane around the outside here I really should point with that or something on the outside and then so it was supposed to match on this side as well okay so that had a ground both sides because you need a really good solid ground between the connectors that seemed to have been an, an issue uh, doing the, the uh, design so now you know what we do have one more we could try let me take that back to um, oops yeah clear right okay why is that not going on I want to trace Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess it is. I see it changing now. Okay. Just doesn't seem as noisy. <coughs> Won't argue, you know. Okay, let me try this other one. Just like curiosity to see if we got that little bump um, on that one or not. Okay, I have to take this off of here. I got the time, seven minutes. That's not too bad. What I want to do is try. The other one, the difference between these two is one's longer than the other. And I'm actually going to make an even shorter version. Um, the reason I made them long is I wanted to set it up such that I could have like three resistors here in parallel. Um, and actually I was going to buy some one watt ones. So you could have like a three watt handheld or something fired into this thing and just get it attenuated and measure of like um, harmonics and spurious emissions, things like that. That was kind of the idea, but uh, the bigger issue was <laughs> getting the darn thing to um, work out to the frequency range I needed without too much uh, signal amplitude variation. Just having trouble getting the connector on here. So, hope you guys are enjoying the videos, by the way. I'm actually a little nervous about doing them to start with, but I'm really kind of enjoying them now, actually. I'm sorry, I haven't uh, been on in a while to do any. Been kind of busy getting ready to retire and move. Oh, that looks a little better actually. I haven't even. Um, I thought that the length of it would have more of a detrimental effect in a bad way, but it's evidently it's not as bad. So let's go back to the marker. Go up to this little bump here and see. See, that's um, about a dB and a half higher there. <coughs> higher amplitude signal. Let's see, right, video averaging. So. That's not bad. I mean, and that starts, you know, if you want to do like half a dB, so it's about 440. <laughs> That's about where I wanted it. As good as it's going to get. Whoops. Went into calibration mode. Come on out, baby. Here we go. No, well, I mean, that's pretty close considering uh, I was trying to get 20 dB and they're sitting here at 20.1. One thing I noticed, I had tougher time with trying to do anything greater than 20 dB. I think it's just because you can get, you know, coupling across the connectors and, and the components, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, with the weaker signals. For some reason, I'm not sure exactly how they all 
how it all ties together RF wise but um, it just seemed harder to do and it seems to work out easier putting two 20s in series than it is trying to make one 40 dB attenuator without it being really uh, problematic when you got up to uh, like around 220 megahertz or so it started climbing up this way so I guess evidently it is as it went up in frequency um, any capacitive effect between across the components whatever um, the reactance became less that would make sense and then there would be more signal coupled across so the output would actually end up going up in amplitude so again um, comments are always welcome on anything I happen to say like that that was kind of speculation on my part there so anyway <coughs> so there's my attenuated board some first attempts hopefully we'll get them to work out right um, I want to thank uh, Ken, K9 Fox Victor, for helping me uh, with the board etching because, and we're still working on getting that alignment right because that's a little tricky, but we have some ideas on that. But I'm um, also, uh, the chemicals we use, you know, it can be dangerous and hazardous, and it's best to do them outdoors where it's, uh, you know, good ventilation and so on. And, um, he, of course, he's now he's down in um, Alabama and so he has nice weather all the time down there pretty much so he can go outside and do this and i can't until it warms up up here in new york so but that's coming soon march is here oh yeah catch you guys later if you have any suggestions for videos i was thinking about doing some videos on just basic electronics or basic test equipment usage or whatever the case might be if you have suggestions if you have things you want me to do you know send me emails let me know um I'm not sure if you can send them to N2CUA at Gmail or not, but I know you can make comments on my page. I think you can send emails to me on my uh, um, channel email kind of thing. But also um, on Gmail itself, um, it's home machinist7, that's all one word, and it's the number 7, at gmail.com. I'll also answer there too. <coughs> anyway, take care, you guys. See you next time around.